Welcome to the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Welcome to ITSP Magazine. Every company has a story to tell, from the small startup to the large enterprise, and everything in between. This is one of them. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. And here we are. We are in London, Info Security Europe. This is Sean Martin, your host of Redefining Cybersecurity here on ITSP Magazine Podcast Network. And uh, we've arrived, the buzz is already happening in the Expo Hall. Uh, we're sitting in the press room right next to the, uh, the keynote stage. And I tracked down, or he tracked me down, uh, Steve Smith from Pantera. Steve, how are you? Good morning, Sean. I'm well, thank you. That's good, that's good. Um, excited to be here. And I mean, these, these conferences bring together lots of folks business to tech, uh, risk to analysts, uh, you name it, they're here. Um, you're here. What's your role at Pentera, Steve? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, the buzz has started already, 7 o'clock this morning, and I people know. are filling in, absolutely. So, uh, I'm the Area Vice President for UK and Ireland and Central Eastern Europe, so uh, a posh title running, running a group of sales teams. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, an important role when you're trying to uh, help companies protect their business. and. So talk to me a little bit, about, let's start here with some of the conversations you have because, let's just face it, uh, CISOs, security leaders, practitioners, they all hear a bunch of things from a bunch of different places. Um, how do you have the conversations with them to understand what Pantera does as it relates to the challenges they face? Yeah, good question. So I think fundamentally one of the things that we're, we're proud to say is that we're unique and we're different. Um, and actually sometimes that causes a problem. Uh, yeah. When you are unique and different, you have to get people to take a step back and uh, think a different way and come out of their, their dare I say, legacy approach, uh, the way they've been doing things and the way their teams have been doing things for perhaps the last 10, 20 years, uh, the way that they've invested, what they invest in, how they continue to invest, how they strategize. Yeah. Uh, and we're kind of flipping that on its head a little bit. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, we, we we do things a certain way. We test very much in production, live. Uh, we're effectively mimicking the hacker's perspective. So we're able to say to, uh, with, with our customer base, some of the largest companies in the world, um, this is what the hacker sees of you. This is your view of what your hacker sees. And every hacker, uh, or every, every hacker perspective is different because every company has a unique environment. Um, so the way that they, they perhaps might traverse uh, across the, the one enterprise is starkly different to another. How they get in is very different to another. Um, and so because we're able to test uh, and prove critical risk, prioritize that risk and show what is most severe and therefore what you must fix first, or what we believe you should fix first. Right. So how do you get the best bang for buck? Um, that's an unusual approach. People are used to perhaps pen testing once a year, a, a snapshot in time. Right. Uh, they are in a position where they are perhaps forced to do that for compliance and regulation reasons, and it's a tick box affair. Uh, a lot of companies would love to test more regularly, uh, even as, as much as daily, uh, which our software allows you to do. Um, and and security, uh, security, automation, valida security automation and validation is what we do. So we're all about a ASV, as, you, as, as you'll see in the stand right. and, our, yes. and our, <laughs> in, in the show and at the front on the Western Terrace with all the flags. Um, uh, basically ASV, Automated Security Validation, is what we do. And when you say that in its own right, it arguably doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. You, you probably understand the connotation of automation. Yes. Security is obvious. Mm -hmm. And validation is, uh, okay, so you're just a test. But actually, when you start to break those three things down, and I know, I know we don't have time, but I could probably spend 20 minutes just talking about those three words. But um, I'll, I'll highlight them first. Well, yeah, maybe just a quick. Yeah, yeah, I'll t yeah absolutely. Yeah, no, I won't, I won't spend all time, but just those three. But um, so uh, we'll break it down quickly, right? So uh, along the theme of just, just those three words, so automated, it's very obvious, right? Um, I'm not here to explain what automation is, but Kellogg's did it back in the 70s. You know, it's, it comes from Victorian times. Uh, it's, a, it's a way that humans are able to, to effectively achieve more but do less. There is a there is a, a relevance to automation, perhaps taking people's jobs. But I think as we've as we've, uh, as we've moved on from the 1970s, people realise now that uh, automation brings a lot of power, a lot of reliability, a lot of scalability. You can do things with accuracy uh, and scalability. So speed, scale, all the things that automation should bring. 
Now, if you can apply that to your security testing, we're on the second word now, how do you get to a point where you're able to now achieve more, do less, give your teams more time, more resource, more capabilities, more focus, more visibility, um, understand the critical risk across not just, we're not, we're not just pen testing an endpoint here, right? This is about security control efficacy. So what investments have you made over the last 10, 15 years, Mr. CISO? And actually, do they coalesce as one IT security suite? Right. Or do they conflict? Do they fail? Do they contest against each other actually in real life? Yeah. So our testing and production using automation allows people to test at a much quicker scale, reliably and consistently. And then the end result is you get shown where your most critical risk is. And that, that fundamentally critical risk is going to come up a few times, right? Because yeah. that is ultimately what we're showing at the end. And then the validations for the third of those three um, if you're able to validate those first two things, you're in a position where you can say, right, listen, we, this is our baseline. Do I need to improve my security posture? How? What do I focus on first? Now, if I've run a test and I've checked that I have a severe risk, you want to get into a validation remediation cycle using automation again. So we've tested something, we've seen a severe risk, we fixed it. Actually, have we opened up another attack vector here by making that change in my business? rerun that identical test, check that you have a, a, a clean base now. Yeah. That's fixed, that's done. Now use the power of automation again to run a series of schedules, run those scheduled tests, have a situation where you are perhaps running Monday to Friday, nine to five, that test will look starkly different to 24 seven, will look starkly different to the weekend. And that's because you have different people doing different things in yeah. different ways on different machines, using different security controls. And that's what a hacker's looking for, that's what he's hoping for. He's right. hoping that somebody is perhaps careless, compromised, malicious. Uh, we're, we're assuming the breach is taking place, right? So we're not checking for phishing and smishing and whaling. We kind of assume that is going to happen. Said respectfully to everybody out there, your, your network is full of holes. Yes. It just is, it's life. Um, however, however many, how, you know, how, how few, how large, how small, but we're assuming the breach has taken place. So the hacker's perspective is, I'm in. Now, what can I get to? Yeah. And, and we're able to show that. You know, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, we overlay to the MITRE ATT&CK framework uh, very distinctly. Okay. A, lot of, a lot of times you'll see from literally from reconnaissance on the left of the framework all the way through to exfiltration on the right and, and all the permutations in between are what we're testing for. So a, a much wider scale of testing uh, and definitely not a snapshot in time. Right. So as you were talking, I'm, I'm picturing um, it could be full of air or full of water. I don't care which balloon you're looking at. Maybe helium, I don't know. But I'm picturing a squishy balloon and the, the squeezing is the controls, right? So you have this thing that, that's kind of very fluid in nature and, and elastic in nature. Yeah, yeah. That's your security program. You're trying to find the best way to manipulate that balloon so that it covered enough, but you don't pop it. <laughs> yeah, pop, good, popping is bad. Popping yes. is bad. And that, that's the complexity, right? So the, to your point, uh, as you're setting controls, uh, you're, you're changing the environment. So you're, you might be opening up another hole, you might be uh, creating a new complexity that uh, yeah. an attacker can, can uh, exploit and compromise. So talk to me a little bit about how, the conver again, back to the conversations you have with customers, where they're thinking differently now with your help to say, we would have not seen this before, or, well, that's a behavior that, that, that now is exhibited yeah. through Pantera that I wasn't able to identify that, in fact, does show lateral movement and, and exposure. Yeah, good, good point. So, I mean, obviously, name, naming no competitive names, but there, yeah. there's a, there are scenarios where a lot of people uh, will derive risk or vulnerability mm. Uh, from what we call a CVSS score. Right. Uh, that CVSS score is generated from a CVE. Mm -hmm. So people are looking for CVEs across my network, that generates a CVSS score. The CVSS is rated one to 10, one being the lowest risk, 10 being the highest. And, and generally, by definition of time resource, we talked about how automation helps that. Teams are stuck in a position where, I, I think just, just, by, just by the lack of having more people and more time, they have to focus on the highest priority vulnerabilities. Right. So they are naturally going to look at eight, nines, and tens. Uh, and to your point of things that didn't exhibit earlier or things we didn't know exist, there's a lot of things out there that a hacker's using that have nothing to do with a CVE or a CVSS score at all. So uh, OS hardening, misconfiguration, uh, MSI's left on a server because they weren't deployed via your EDR. There are, there are so many different permutations. And we're testing for all of those things. So where we become... Um, Keys fun left in GitHub. <laughs> yes, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So where, where we become fundamentally different is 
We're not saying that it's a C, it's not it's not a it's not CVE and CVSS testing on steroids. Of course, that's part of what we do. That's part of some of the techniques, some of the adversarial techniques we deploy will will relate to that. Um, but more often than not, I mean, what if you had, let's say you had an SMB relay issue or an LMNR protocol issue or you had an open port you didn't know existed or somebody had admin rights to turn off CrowdStrike, oh, sorry, to turn off an EDR, I beg your pardon. Right. Other, other vendors are, yes. uh, are, are available. So in, in terms of NDR, XDR, uh, EDR, all those things, uh, you may well have somebody that's moved through the business over a period of time and uh, unfortunately they perhaps have the right to turn off the EDR on their desktop, on their laptop. Uh, shouldn't, of course. Um, but they were sick of the pop-ups, so they did for that afternoon, just that afternoon, mind you, because they were busy as a project and they didn't complete it. I will switch that back on at the end of the day, and they don't. Right. Uh, and there's your in. Yep. So, and it, and it may be, and, and in those circumstances, that's not a CVSS derived threat at all. Nothing to do with CVE. Um, your open port, nothing to do with CVE. But when you get to the point of view of um, what we're saying is those, you, you mentioned about um, uh, things that you might not have spotted. I related earlier to people looking at eight, nines, and tens. Those examples outside of OS hardening and open port are actually a 1.2, a 2.2, and a 3.2 in CVSS terms. But when you group them together as a perfect storm, as a group of interdependencies, individually mean nothing. But put together as a, as a method in which the hacker is going to utilize, hold on to a few things as they progress through your business, uh, that, that's the attack vector. Yep. So we, we moved from 1.2, we moved to a 6.4, we went back to the 3.2, we had access, we hashed a password, we moved on again, we did some lateral movement, we, we had that hashed password, can we apply that against AD? If it's AD, can we find a particular password string? Can we do that? Can, how can we move through this next piece here? The open port gave us access to the next bit, and then bang, we're in, and, and we've exfiltrated the data. So um, those scenarios are something that a pen tester can find, we completely accept that. Um, but not at speed, not at scale, not consistently and accurately in software form a hundred times a week. Yeah. And they're using the tools at speed and scale to, to uncover, right? to, to, to do their own dirty deeds. Talk, we have a few minutes left here. I want to, um, I want to get your thoughts on the, the scope of what you do and maybe kind of paint the picture because I'm, I'm picturing different types of networks yeah. Um, perhaps IT, OT, IoT, uh, multiple clouds. How, how does Pentera fit in to an environment? Where, how, what, what are you looking at in terms of how yeah, good, far, wide, and deep do you go? Good question. So, um, are we the silver? Uh, you know, as, as any vendor would say, are we the silver bullet to everything? No, not at all, and, and, and wouldn't purport to be. Um, the vast majority of enterprises out there have. Uh, a, an on-prem, off-prem hybrid environment, right? So they, they, they have uh, machinations in the cloud, they, mm -hmm. they still have an on-prem environment, they, have, they might have on-prem AD, um, and we're a, we're a perfect fit for that. Um, there, there's, two, there's two sides to, to where we sit at the moment. One is what we call, uh, or effectively, is internal attack surface management, and then there's external attack surface management. So, uh, for maybe it's a bold to mention a couple of product names, so core uh, for us is our internal proposition. So. Uh, where, where are you in your internal environment? What can we access? What can we hack? What can we exfiltrate? And then that, so that's an inside out approach. Yep. The outside in approach, which is our external attack surface management proposition called Surface, is looking from the opposite angle. Okay. And that gives you a 300, uh, for, for companies out there, that now gives you uniquely a 360 degree view of your attack surface. The key difference here is we're looking to exploit. So I mentioned vulnerabilities earlier on. Fundamental to everything we do is looking at the exploit, exploitability, right. not just the vulnerability. You can have you can have a hundred dormant vulnerabilities. Your security controls may actually protect you against that. Uh, we're, what we're saying is true, yeah. that these ones are exploitable and these create your most severe risk. So these are what you should fix first. And that, that as I said, that's both inside out and outside in. And I think um, you know the. Uh, the, the way the way that the market is moving, um, there's there's a lot of lot of motions towards the cloud, and, and obviously our company will keep up with that trend as as you'd expect. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I'm picturing the balloon, <laughs> the, the squishy the squishy balloon. There's, a, there's an element of being squished up to the cloud. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, th I think, and, and that's the key thing, right? So the um, to your to your squishy balloon metaphor. Um, the, the, the network is dynamic, it's always changing. Every single person doing a different thing in a different way, for accessing um, services, applications, solutions via a different part of the network, network control and network security, uh, is, is happy days for a hacker. Yeah, yeah. That's what we fix. Yeah. 
human error. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're back to the yeah. uh, the compromised, careless, and malicious. Yeah. Yeah. Every every business has them. Perfect. Well, not perfect that everybody has them, but indeed. Yeah, it's uh, and totally understandable. So, um, as we wrap here, Steve, what um, kind of conversations do you think they'll have here at Infosecurity Europe? Who do, who do you expect to chat with? Uh, I, I'm always hopeful to speak to CISOs that have a budget right. and want to buy my solution. Obviously, <laughs> that's that, that, that's the nirvana. Yes. Uh, but no, you know, we're here. We're here to sort of. Um, as I said right at the beginning, we're different, we're unique, it's interesting, it's, it t make, makes people step back a little bit and think, what can I do? We're here to talk to uh, anybody really that wants to kind of change their game, have more visibility, uh, understand where their business is exploitable in production, right. um, not, not vulnerable in a sandbox. So you're doing demos at the booth? We've got, uh, we've got a lot of people over from HQ, yes, we have product management, we have um, the product directors, we have the product researchers. Our company's very heavy on R&D, okay. uh, a huge group of researchers that are, that are incredibly clever people. Uh, so we've got them here today, we've got sales engineers doing demos. Yes. Uh, we have a, a, the a demos for? cyber comedy as well. The de well, the demos, were, I mean, literally I think it's, uh, as always, we'd like to talk to people that are, that are interested and have the ability to, um, uh, to procure or to or to engage us in a project, right. um, but no, uh, you know, large screen demos are open to everybody. Um, I think you know, even the the younger people, um, getting them to to understand there's a different way of doing things from an early age. Uh, obviously, not no, no children running around, but you know what I mean. Uh, if they can see the light from a, from a, 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 an early point of view, then um, we hope that sticks with them. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Think differently. Funny it enough, is. I think. I think that's the theme of this year's it, it, rethink. Yeah, yeah rethink. absolutely. There we go, rethink. So I think that's a perfect, perfect theme for, uh, for what you're talking about. And uh, Steve, it's been great chatting with you. Likewise, wish you, thank you. Uh, wish you huge success. You were going to mention the, the comedy. I think, uh, uh, we I think we I've, have seen, a, I've seen that comedian yes, online anyway. Yes, we have a, uh, I, I, I we're taking a risk putting a scouser on stage, but uh, Ian, right. Ian Murphy, very funny guy. Um, Stand-up comedian, um, company called Cyberoff does his own sort of comedic yes. videos of effectively cybersecurity training. So great fit for us. Really good guy, funny guy. Um, but yeah, comedy shows, uh, which is uh, we just try to do something different. Yeah, love it. Well, Steve, great chatting with Likewise, you. Likewise, thank you. Wish you uh, good success this week, good conversations, and uh, yeah, thanks for helping to protect the business as well. Thank you, Sean. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you learned something new and the story made you think, then share ITSBmagazine.com with your friends, family, and colleagues. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey. You can always find us at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society.